Thanksgiving weekend, St. Andrews United Church, and thank you to uh, Michael for playing that. And for those of you who missed it, there was also a birthday song. It was Dawn's birthday this week and Brenda's birthday this week, and Michael sang to them. So happy birthday to Dawn and Brenda, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. My name is Reverend Catherine Selby, and it is my honor to serve as the minister of St. Andrews United Church. And on behalf of all of us, we would like you to know, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you believe or what you doubt, you are welcome here in this digital sacred space. And we're all glad that you are here today. And now let us pass the peace of Christ, the wholeness of Christ, the shalom of Christ to one another. Peace be with you. Our first hymn is hymn number 517, Come You Thankful People, verses one and four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Michael. When we hunger for justice and thirst for the liberation of all life, when we want for collective flourishing with the entirety of your spirit, blessed are we for our longings will birth the dreams of God. When we weep with all the world's aches, when we find ourselves filled with sorrow because of what is cruel, what is lost, what is forgotten, blessed are we for God weeps through us. When we are punished socially or economically for our refusal to go with the flow of normalized evil, when our truth telling or practices of love leave us isolated or condemned, blessed are we for we offer a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. God draws near wherever hearts are open. Love come and shape our understanding. Let us pray. Holy One, your spirit moves in provocative ways. Though evil seeks false peace, you shake things up. You turn things upside down. You leave us surprised and inspired. When we are comforted by the radical nature of your love, do not let us push you away or remain unchanged. May we embrace discomfort with joy that we might be friends of justice and companions to peace. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 227, For the Fruit of All Creation, verses 1 and 3. Thank you, Michael. And now we have children's time led by our worship chair, Maria Bercy. Welcome, Maria. Thank you, Reverend Catherine. Hi, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. So today we are going back to our Ten Commandments program. And we're going to do it a little differently this morning. We're going to talk about it first, and then we'll read our book after. So we're going to talk about the fourth commandment, which is Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Um, so that's from Exodus 20, verse 8. Now, the longer section from that, it says, Remember to keep the Sabbath whole, as a holy day. You may work and get everything done in six days each week. But the seventh day is a day of rest to honor the Lord your God. On that day, no one may do any work, not you, your son, your daughter, your men or women slaves, Neither your animals nor the foreigners living in your cities may work. The reason is that in six days, the Lord made everything. He made the sky, earth, sea, and everything in them. And on the seventh day, he rested. So the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Okay. So um, let's read. I want you to guys start thinking about that. Thinking about what do you do to make the Sabbath holy? What have you heard from other people about what they do? And what do you think you'd like to do maybe if you decided you want to do something different? Because we are doing things differently nowadays, aren't we? We are not meeting in our church. We'll get to that. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Okay. So our story for today is Last Stop on Market Street by Matt Dillapena, and the pictures are by Christian Robinson. Okay. 
So when we read our book, I want you to try to count. This is our um, main character, CJ. That's CJ's Nana. And as CJ and Nana go on their adventure, I want you to think how many ways are they honoring the Sabbath in this book, okay? And we'll compare notes after and see if you got the same number that I got, okay? CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched the water pool on water flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire, and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the door swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. The old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. CJ, he made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go anywhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Mr. Bobo or the sunglass van. And I heard Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared at the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. Feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered. I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So CJ and the spot, so did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone in the bus clapped, even the boys in back. Then a glance at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop to Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus, crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he'd never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamps still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh or deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ. Now, come on. Okay, so that's last stop on Market Street. Now, how many ways to honor the Sabbath did you count while you were reading the book? Uh, anybody? Well, I can't find you guys. I don't know how to. 
Anyway, okay, well, I counted eight. So first, the most obvious, they go to church, right? That one's changed a little bit because we can't go in the building, but we're still going to honor the Sabbath here in, on Zoom. Uh, they volunteered at the soup kitchen, so they were helping other people. They were making and serving meals for those people who were hungry. And then CJ also uh, was helping people by giving a coin to the musician and smiling and being kind to people on the bus as he greeted them. So that's another way we can honor the divine spirit by being kind to others. Uh, they were spending time together with people you love, CJ and his Nana together. That one's also a bit of a downer these days, isn't it? Because we can't be together, together, but we can be together on Zoom. And that one's really sad. This week, I was supposed to go to Quebec to see my family and I couldn't go, so I was really sad about that. But we're gonna be together in different ways. They were enjoying nature, the rain and the rainbow, and they were enjoying music. They were grateful for what they had. Nana was explaining the joys of riding the bus as opposed to going in a car. And they were seeing beauty everywhere, right? Nana says, sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. And I think that's such a wonderful way to appreciate what's around you. And Nana was very wise, I think. So that was seven or eight things that I counted in the book that were ways to honor the Sabbath. So this week, I want you to think about the ways that you can honor the Sabbath. Now, in the past, they said, the Bible says, don't work. And realistically, most people are not doing that anymore. And we have to use our brains and our hearts to find out a way to interpret what the Bible says for our, day, our lives today. So maybe that means not doing homework, or maybe it means doing your homework a little more quickly, or maybe it means only screen time uh, rules, maybe only... Uh, not having screens once a week. Anyway, talk to the adults in your family about what they do to honor Sabbath and decide if you want to start something new and let me know how that goes. I hope you have a blessed week and uh, let's say a short prayer. Okay, hands on our hearts. Dear God, help us to be grateful for every day of the week, but Sunday is a very special day and help us to keep it holy in the best way we can. Help us not to be too sad about missing being with our families this Thanksgiving Sunday. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Maria. And now let us pray the prayer that Christ, our elder brother, taught us how to pray. Our mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not in, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory and the power forever. Amen. And now we have Michelle Thomas, our um, new youth coordinator who will be reading our scripture today. Welcome Michelle. So our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, and we're going to read it first in the King James Version. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. And you now read Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, again in the message version. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed climbed with him. 
Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And this is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God in his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get inside when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you show people how to cooperate instead of compete for fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, Count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even, for though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Here ends the two scripture readings. Thank you, Michelle. And instantly, this is one of Michelle's favorite scriptures. <laughs> uh, next, we have Rick Brewer, who will be singing a song that he wrote called Thanks. Welcome, Rick. Good morning. Thank you. Thankfulness, Thanksgiving. On the surface, saying thanks is, is simple. We say thanks when we appreciate something someone something's done someone's done for us or we think we say thanks sometimes to god when you think a little bit deeper thankfulness is so important um when you're saying thanks you're thinking about good things it's such a positive thing to do there's enough negative in this world we need to think positive more and that's what thankfulness is thinking good thoughts and saying thanks for those good thoughts. It can help with pain, it can help with depression. So we're not gonna skip Thanksgiving this year. It's been a tough year, um, no doubt about that, but that's all the more reason to give thanks as a reminder of the good, the goodness. Everything that God gives us and the people, I mean the people that are listening today and aren't listening today, so many good people, so much to be thankful for. Finally, before I sing my song, thank you, because you folks have given me the inspiration to write a song. I haven't written a song for quite a few years. So here is thanks. <clears throat> we give thanks for the music and the circle of life. We always remember to pray and give thanks for good deeds and the trees, the people we meet, our bread, our wine, our God. We give thanks for the music and the wonders of life. We always remember to pray and give thanks for kind words and the birds the bees and the seas sunbeams moon rays and rain we give thanks for the music and life's everyday gifts we always remember to pray and give thanks for each person who lives, for those who forgive, for hope and faith and love. We give thanks for the music and life's everyday gifts. 
we always remember to pray and give thanks for each person who lives, for those who forgive, for hope and faith and love, for hope and faith and love. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for sharing your gift with us. And now let us pray. God, we thank you so much for this Sabbath that we are marking as holy. We thank you so much for this sacred time and this sacred space and these sacred people that we can gather in your name. We thank you that you are here among us and within us and underneath us and ahead of us. We thank you for your expansive love that invites us into newness and invites us into wholeness that doesn't control us or coerce us. I ask God that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For you are St. Andrew's strength and you are St. Andrew's redeemer. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about blessed today. Um, we are uh, in a sermon series called Beloved Body, Beloved Soul. And what we're talking about today is uh, when we're thankful for our beloved body and when we're thankful for our beloved soul and how a lot of what we deem as blessed and not blessed is maybe not from God. Maybe it's not the most spiritual way to look at it. So we're going to delve into it because blessed is all around us. There is this Bruno Mars song that I'm going to play. It's called 24 Karat Magic. Ready? This one. I bring this up because in this song, Bruno Mars says, hashtag blessed. And Bruno Mars is part of this cultural trend um, it exploded on social media in 2014. So as my daughter would say, a lifetime ago, um, where people were putting hashtag blessed all over social media. I'm not on any kind of social media. So I read about this in the New York Times where I learn about cultural trends. Um, and in this New York Times article, it was writing that hashtag blessed is all over all kinds of places. Like a yoga instructor um, got a package to go do yoga in the Caribbean. So she took a picture of herself doing yoga with the ocean behind her with, with hashtag blessed. There was a mom who um, dressed her child up in this fabulous outfit and that was a hashtag blessed. Uh, there was Kanye and Kim Kardashian with champagne popping, hashtag blessed. And the writer of this was talking about how hashtag blessed has kind of become a cultural way of humble bragging. <laughs> that these days um, we frame this word blessed with all kinds of things. And in the end of this article, he wrote, and if you can't be blessed yourself, you can always mock those who are blessed. Somebody wrote, caught a piece of bacon falling out of my sandwich right before it hit the ground. Hashtag blessed. Um, so this word hashtag blessed is kind of all over in our world right now. I bring this up because the Beatitudes mean blessed. So in Jesus's sermon, in his Sermon on the Mount, he talks about blessed are you, blessed are those. And this is really interesting because the blessings that Jesus are saying are not what we would hashtag blessed. It's not champagne popping. It's not a cute baby outfit. It's not like everyone getting along um, with hashtag blessed. It's, it's the stuff that we would never think of as blessings. And this word blessed, um, this, this structure that Jesus put it into, the blessed are you, was super popular in Greek culture. Like, blessed are you who are wealthy, for you will never go hungry. Blessed are you who are wise, for you will never be exposed to foolishness. 
this was something floating in the air, just like it is in our air, right? Like maybe we don't verbalize it like this, but blessed are the powerful because they're not vulnerable. Blessed are the wealthy because they get tons of deference. Um, blessed are the successful because people gather around them and want to be their friends. Blessed are the healthy and able-bodied for these are the images that we have of goodness and wholeness in life. So we do this too. In Jesus's day, it would have been pretty similar. Like, blessed are the people who are at the top of the social order. Blessed are the powerful. Blessed are the ones with material possessions. Blessed are the ones who are like the, the spiritual leaders. Like, blessed are the Mother Teresas. Blessed are the Nelson Mandela's. Um, and Jesus takes this structure and totally turns this upside down and says things that are, that are offensive, like grace is offensive and what Jesus says is offensive, but we're going to hold on real quick. We're going to talk about my childhood. When I had um, Thanksgiving meals, which it would have been in uh, November, although the weather would have been the same because the California November is like this beautiful fall and it's fabulous. As a child, we had this huge Thanksgiving meal where all of our family would come in and I don't know, maybe there were like 30 or 40 people and there were just tables everywhere. And I got sat at the children's table. So I would get put at the children's table with the other kids. Uh, one of my very favorite things about Thanksgiving was um, the olives. I love black olives. And the only time we ever had black olives was on Thanksgiving. And I would do the thing where I put like um, a black olive on every single finger because I was at the children's table. So I wasn't supervised. Otherwise my parents would never let me do this. And that was one of my Thanksgiving highlights. Um, but at this children's table, this was for us, the grownups were doing their grown up thing. And and I think the Sermon on the Mount is the transition from the children's table to the adult table of faith. It is easy at the children's table to do hashtag bless when we're popping champagne or when our houses are clean or when everything in our life is going great. It's easy to um, say hashtag blessed when we're very pleased with what's going on. And that is the gratitude at the children's table, which is awesome. And it's so good to be grateful. But then Jesus invites us on the Sermon on the Mount to graduate and go to the grown-up table of Thanksgiving, the grown-up table of faith, to find the blessing, to claim the blessing in the midst of things that we would never think were hashtag blessed. So Jesus says, blessed are you who mourn. Can you imagine like on social media, someone like putting a picture of themselves crying and just totally laid out with hashtag blessed? Blessed are you when you are at the end of your rope. Blessed are you when you have tried everything you possibly can try and nothing is working. Again, take a picture of that and put it out to the world with hashtag blessed. Uh, blessed are you who hunger and thirst for justice and righteousness in the world. Could you imagine a picture of you just like fretting over the state of the world and caring so much about that with hashtag blessed? In this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus completely reverses the order. He takes the people who we have said are at the bottom of the heap and turns it upside down so that the people who are at the bottom, who are in the places that we never want to be, we don't want to be the doormats who are showing mercy and compassion again and again and again. We don't want to be the ones at the end of our rope. We don't want to be the ones mourning. We don't want that. But Jesus takes this, turns it upside down and said, these are the people who will see God. These are the people who are going to inherit the earth. These are the people who the things of God are available to. And what I would like to say to us in this moment, in this moment of not being able to see families for Thanksgiving, in this moment of our bodies breaking down, in this moment of loneliness, in, in these moments that we're in right now because of all of these circumstances uh, of COVID, in these moments, God says to us, we are blessed. In these moments, there's things to be grateful for because there are spiritual treasures. Like we are standing on a treasure map and right underneath our feet is an X. We are standing on diamond mines. 
that there is a hashtag blessed happening in the moments that we don't feel God. We don't feel like there's anything good happening in this. But Jesus comes and says, blessed are you who mourn. Do you notice that Jesus doesn't say, blessed are you who mourn because I'm going to wave my Holy Spirit magic and make the pain go away? That's not what he says. He says, blessed are you who mourn for you will be comforted. Blessed are the poor in spirit, not because I'm going to shazam and like make you rich in spirit all of a sudden. Blessed are you. Jesus isn't changing what's happening. Jesus isn't changing the circumstance. He's inviting us to reframe the way we see what we're going through. He's inviting us to stop looking at the hashtag blessed champagne popping and start looking at our lives that we're in right now and find that there are blessings here that the God of the universe says, even when you are at the end of your rope, even when you are tired, even when you are mourning, even when you are in places that the whole world around you says are things to avoid, you are divinely favored, loved, and blessed by God in those moments. And another thing about this is Jesus invites us, rather than going to the successful or the strong or the powerful, with the Beatitudes, Jesus invites us to go find our blessings from the people who are meek, from the people who are mourning, from the people who are poor in spirit. Jesus says, these are the places rich in God. These are the places rich in the kingdom of God. These are the places rich in what matters the very most in this universe. So that when we see people who are down and out, when we see people who are at the end of their rope, Jesus says to us, go there, learn from them. There is great wisdom and blessing for all of us in these places. So this week, I want us to reframe this word, this hashtag blessed, this word for the, the word beatitude means blessed. Um, the Greek word there is, is makarios, which I did not know this till this week. And I was like shrieking with glee and laughter because I'm such a Bible nerd. Remember how we're talking about how salvation means like expansive so that when, when God invites us into God's salvation, it's to invite us into these expansive, large places of freedom and liberty. This word, this Greek word for blessed means to become large. Ah, it's the same thing. So that in naming the blessing available to us right now, it's part of us becoming large. It's part of God expanding us in grace and setting us free. And those are, those are two totally connected words. So what I want us to do in the hard times, um, in the moments that we would say we're at the bottom of the heap, in the moments that we would not want to take pictures of or anyone want up, or want anyone to see us in these moments. Um, what I would invite us into this week is to say yes and, to name it, to own it, and then to frame it with, you are blessed in this moment. You are blessed in this exact moment that you were in right now. So not to resist it and not to wish that everything was different so that you could be in a different kind of moment, but to find the richness of God, to find the expansiveness of God in this exact moment. Um, I took an improv class a couple of years ago and um, in every single exercise we did, the foundation of it was yes and. So it, they were always group activities and somebody would say something to you or do something and you had to take what they did and turn it into something to offer somebody else. So no matter what you were thinking, like I would think, okay, this is gonna go in this direction. But then before it got to me, it would go in a totally different direction. And the idea was just to respond, to accept what came and then to respond to yes and rather than no but. And I feel like this is what God is inviting us to do right now, to yes and the moments in our life, not to say no but, this needs to be different, there's no blessing for me here, but to yes and, um, and that these beatitudes, these blessings of God are not prescriptions. Jesus isn't saying go be poor in spirit, go mourn, go hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus is saying, when you are there, you are blessed. Um, 
And I'm going to leave with the, um, the wisdom of Kurt Vonnegut, who said that the most vocal Christians really clamor for the Ten Commandments that were not written by Jesus. They were told by Moses, probably written down much later than Moses lived. The uh, most vocal Christians clamor for, in the U.S., um, for the Ten Commandments to be put on government buildings, to be put on schools. And he said, nobody clamors for the Beatitudes, because what would that look like to put blessed are those who show mercy on a courthouse or what would that look like to put blessed are the peacemakers outside of the pentagon um, these things that jesus invites us into are are powerful so this week um i want you to frame what you're going through with a blessed blessed are you in this moment and i'm going to close with uh, Beatitudes by Rob Bell. So he rewrote the Beatitudes and I really like these. Blessed are those who don't have it all together. Blessed are those who have run out of strength, ideas, willpower, resolve, or energy. Blessed are those who ache because of how severely out of whack the world is. Blessed are those who stumble, trip, and fall in the same place again and again. Blessed are those who on a regular basis have a dark day in which despair seems to be a step behind them wherever they go. Blessed are you, for God is with you. God is on your side. God meets you in that place. The gospel is the counterintuitive, joyous, exuberant news that Jesus has brought us the unending, limitless, stunning love of God. Amen. And now we are going to sing hymn number 519, Sing to the Lord of Harvest, verses 1 and 3. Thank you, Michael. And now we come to the prayer of confession, um, the time in the service where if we're feeling ashamed or if we're feeling contracted or if we're feeling stuck or if we're feeling cut off from the love of God, it's time to lay down the walls and receive God's love and grace. Let us pray. Our hearts are hard, O oh God. Soften them with your love. Our hands are clenched, O oh God. Open them with your grace. Our feet are planted too firmly, O oh God. Invite us to dance with you. Our lives are not our own, we know. Let us live and move and have our being in you, O oh God. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of God. The love of God is more expansive than anything you could ever imagine. And you find yourself, your true self, located right smack in the center of that. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, welcome John Webster, our board chair. Good morning. It's Thanksgiving, and what have we got to be thankful for? Mary and I are isolated in our own bubble. My business is struggling, and I've laid off staff. The news is bleak. There's an election in the States, and COVID-19 cases are rising. So what have I got thankful to what have I got to be thankful for? I'm thankful that we have a political system where our leaders are doing the best they can to make sure that we are safe. I'm thankful that we have doctors and scientists who are working hard to find a cure. I'm thankful that I live in a country where we have or at least are working towards a fair and just society with laws that try to match our ideals. I'm thankful that I live in a community of friends and relatives that I can talk with on the internet, on the phone, or even Canada Post. I'm thankful that I have faith and believe that God is working through me to do his work. I'm thankful that God is beside us as we work our way through this pandemic. And I'm thankful for all those who are able to volunteer at St. Andrew's United Church by communicating and sharing with others in the congregation, by sharing their resources through their offering, by maintaining or increasing their PAR donation, by mailing in or dropping off their donation to the secure mailbox at the front door of the church, or electronically through their bank by clicking on the donate button on our website. I'm thankful for those who are reaching out to support our members who are struggling. I'm thankful for those who give of their time and talent and money. Yes, we can have a th happy Thanksgiving by working with God and with each other. And let us celebrate by joining Michael in the singing of the hymn of dedication, hymn number 540, Grant Us God, the Grace of Giving. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all the ways that you care for our bodies, that you care for our souls, and that you have given us one another. I ask God that you would open our eyes to see the blessings all around us, the things that we normally wouldn't see as blessings. And I ask that you would multiply this offering and use it to bring your justice, your grace, and your freedom. We love you so much. Amen. Um, and now we are going to do the pastoral prayer. This is the prayer called Blessed Are Those in Times of Coronavirus, and it is written by Reverend Anna Bledel. Let us pray. Blessed are the joy finders, the joy sharers, the joy tenders. Blessed are the workers, the strikers, the organizers bending toward collective justice and survival. Blessed are the mask makers and the mask wearers. Blessed are those foregoing convenience and excess for someone else's survival. Blessed are the members of parliament and mayors and legislators laboring for public health and collective life over profit, ego, and the deadly demands of gun-toting, terror-mongering evildoers. Blessed are the essential workers, yes, yes, the healthcare workers, sanitation workers, grocery store workers, mail carriers, farm workers, and also blessed are these essential workers. The poets still feeling, dreamers still imagining, teachers still sparking curiosity, students still soaking up and sharing wisdom, caregivers still caring, journalists still investigating and reporting. Blessed are the music makers, art makers, Makers, word makers and meaning makers. Blessed are the imams, the rabbis, the pastors, the chaplains, the spirit seekers, ministering and tending and holding. 
Blessed are the baby plants just in my garden, reaching for the sun on this cold, gray, rainy day. Blessed are the letter writers, the card senders. Blessed are you sheltering in place. Blessed are you locked in place. Blessed are you without a safe place. Blessed are you in your tears, your prayers, your fears. Blessed are you every moment you cho choose tenderness, softness, gentleness, care. Blessed are you still savoring delights when and where they are offered and found. Blessed are you in your grieving, your losing, your mourning. Blessed are you in your living, your loving. Blessed are you in your fearing, your dying. Blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are we. Amen. Please turn with me to hymn number 236. Now thank we all our God, verses one and two. leave you with one of my favorite blessings, a Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work tirelessly for justice, freedom, and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of all they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in the world 
so that you are able, with God's grace, to do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. Thanksgiving, St. Andrew's United Church. Thank you for joining us in our service. And today we don't have coffee and tea directly following the service because of Thanksgiving weekend, but we will resume that next Sunday. So have a wonderful weekend. You are blessed. <laughs>